Now, question number 41. For superconductor, susceptibility and relative permeability are. Now, dear student, superconductor are perfect diamagnetic material. And for diamagnetic xi, the susceptibility is minus 1. And mu r, you know, that is equal to 1 plus xi. And that is equal to 1 plus of minus 1 is equal to 0. So, xi minus 1 and mu r is 0. And the third option is the correct option. Question number 42 is in series LCR circuit voltage supplied is given 300 sine of 314 T plus pi by 6 volt and the current supplied is given I is 200 sine of 314 T plus pi by 3 ampere. The correct option the impedance of the circuit and reactance of the circuit. Now see if you look then the phase difference between voltage and current this is 314 T plus pi by 3 and this is 314 t plus pi by 6 so the phase difference is uh, pi by 6 and which one the current is leading and see what is z z is always equal to the the voltage the peak value upon the current and the voltage peak value is 300 and divided by the current is 200 so z is equal to 3 by 2 ohm for the circuit so this is the fourth, first and second option, those are not true. And now let's calculate the reactance. So Z is 3 by 2. And what is the circuit? I said the current is leading. Let's say I take current in this direction. Then in this direction will be the voltage or Z. And Z is equal to 3 by 2. And what is this angle? Pi by 6, which is equal to 30 degree. This become your R and this is your reactance, which could be no doubt, which will be x e minus x z the combined reactance now from this geometry x by z is equal to sine of 30 degree the phase phase angle so x is equal to z into sine of 30 degree and z we have calculated is 3 by 2 ohm and sine 30 is 1 by 2 so this is 3 by 4 ohm I look at the option 4. The reactance of the circuit is 3 by 4 ohm. And question number 43 says that a conducting rod of length 40 centimeter and resistance 0.6 ohm moves along two smooth conducting rails C, D and E, F with velocity of 10 meter per second normal to the uniform magnetic field of 3 tesla. The two resistance R1 is 6 ohm and R2 is 4 ohm are connected between the rail as shown in the figure the power required to move the rod now see when you move this rod toward the right then there will be the magnetic force in the opposite direction due to which the power is required to move and see the power required to move will be equal to the power generated and power generated is equal to E square divided by the equivalent resistance of the path. Now, how will you calculate E? The E, the EMF is induced in this one, and that is equal to V L and velocity on perpendicular. The magnetic field is given equal to 3 Tesla. The length is given to be 0.4 meter, and velocity is 10. So this is 12 volt. So EMF induced is 12 volt. Now look at the circuit. So this is the battery which is of 12 volt and this circuit has the resistance. So what is the circuit? This is the battery with the internal resistance given equal to the resistance of this arm which is given equal to 0.6 ohm and there are two branches one like this R1 and second is R2. So R1 is given equal to 6 and R2 is given equal to 4. And if you look carefully across the batteries, these two are in parallel. And the parallel, then this resistance become equal to 6 into 4 over 6 plus 4, which is equal to 2.4 ohm. Now, 
in the circuit what is the total resistance this is 0.6 ohm because of this arm and 2.4 therefore your r equivalent become equal to 2.4 plus 0.6 and that is equal to 3 ohm now you know the voltage you know the resistance the power you have this formula so right here the power is equal to 12 square divided by r so 144 divided by 3 which is equal to 48 watt so 48 watt is the answer required so answer to this question is the first option the question number 44 is the difference between the nth and n plus first bore radius of hydrogen atom is equal to n minus one fourth radius the value of n you see the solution he says that the radius of n plus 1 minus radius of n is equal to the radius of n minus 1 and you know that radius in general r of n is equal to 0.53 angstrom into n square so if i fill up here this become n plus 1 square into 0.53 angstrom minus 0.53 into n square and that is equal to 0.53 into n minus 1 whole square that is n plus 1 whole square minus n square is equal to n minus 1 whole square then square it and they have to solve it that is a square plus this plus this minus n square is equal to n square plus this minus 2n you solve n comes to be 4 so answer is the first option Question number 45 says that binding energy of nucleus X and Y are E1 and E2 respectively. Two nuclei of X fuse to give one nuclei of Y and the energy release is Q and the correct relation. Now see, two of X, they are combining together and is giving Y and certain amount of energy is released. Now what is given? The binding energy of this is given and binding energy of this X individual is given. Now this has more binding energy than this then the energy release will be equal to binding energy of this y minus the binding energy of this that is equal to 2x the binding energy and now see this binding energy of y is given equal to a2 and 2 times because 2 are used and binding energy is e1 so q should be equal to e2 minus 2 of e1 and the correct option is the option number Thank you very much for watching and keep watching and keep working. Thank you very much.